are listening to episode 149 of Mighty Life Radio. I'm Matt Blackburn, and today I have Mr. Charles Barber of Crucial Four back on the show for the third time. This time we're talking about ozone therapy. And Charles has been experimenting with ozone for over a decade, and he's really helped to shift my perspective on how I view ozone which I talk about in the show, but just to summarize it real quick, I used to think that it was extremely dangerous and potentially harmful to people with iron overload and lipofuscinosis slash yellow fat disease and a lot of PUFAs, polyunsaturated fatty acids, or if you want to be more technical and specific, HUFAs, highly unsaturated fatty acids, which don't get processed, but get stored in the adipose tissue. And that includes DHA, EPA, and ALA, linolenic, not linoleic, which is less harmful. And these cause lipid peroxidation. And ozone works through peroxides, otherwise known as ozonides, which Charles goes into a little bit on the show. And that's really what ozone is about. It's not all about O3. It's not all about O2 oxygen. It's about these ozonides that, as Charles say, do the work with the ozone therapy. And I appreciate that Charles thinks that IV ozone is very invasive and unnecessary. I strongly, very strongly share that sentiment. I think sticking yourself with a butterfly needle in the vein over and over is really insane and extremely unnecessary unless someone's on their deathbed. But the biohacker way of doing things is often very invasive and can cause harm in the case of ascorbic acid IVs or glutathione IVs. A lot of the things that people are pumping directly into their blood is causing extreme imbalance and causing deficiency of things that they're already deficient in, namely bioavailable copper. So we're just going to jump in. This is really informative, so make sure you have your notepad ready. Charles throws a lot of information out there, and we go through a little question and answer session at the end. And ahead of time, I apologize if the audio quality shifts about 20 minutes in because my internet here where I recently moved to Colorado has been really choppy and not reliable. And so we actually finished the interview on speaker on an iPhone, but hopefully it still sounds good and you guys get something out of this episode. Here is Charles Barber. All right, Charles Barber, welcome back. Thanks for having me, Matt. Yeah, thanks for uh, coming, talking about ozone. I think this is round three. I uh, always enjoy talking with you. And lately, you've been getting me really amped up on uh, ozone therapy. And it's something that I was uh, skeptical about, as we've been talking about for the last several months, uh, with the PUFA thing and the lipid peroxidation and that whole process. And I just associated any kind of oxidative therapy like hyperbaric or ozone as harmful. And, um, I know there's a lot of harmful things that biohackers are doing. I think just jumping in, not really knowing what fire they're playing with, but, uh, I really liked your grounded approach to it and the information that you shared with me, your sources, and it all just made sense. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I was very similar in the beginning as you were, you know, especially, you know, hydrogen peroxide therapy, always hear about how it can burn you and hurt you. And, and then obviously hyperbaric, but any type of oxidative therapy, there's a lot of confusion in antioxidants and oxidants. And then when you start reading about ozone, they talk about how use antioxidants, if you ever have a reaction with the ozone. So it kind of can create this kind of like, confusion a little bit and you know for me initially um until i started to really truly understand what's happening in the body 
when ozone enters it. That's when things started to change and understanding ozonides, which are basically forms of peroxides. Um, but then also understanding how ozone is a you know, dipolar magnetic molecule and in an aqueous solution, it cannot induce any free radical formation on a pH lower than eight, obviously. So our pH would never go above eight. We would die, right, if our pH got that high. So it's very interesting, you know, um, because ozone is the only oxidative therapy you can do that doesn't induce free radicals. You know, hyperbaric, if you do a little too much, it can do that. And obviously, hydrogen peroxide therapy, which is the other, those are the two other oxidative therapies out there. Those both can create free radicals or oxidize you. And, and that's another thing, I think. I think a lot of these terms, free radicals, oxidize, they're used so loosely and they can all also be used interchange, interchangeably. So that's where a lot of that can happen too. Um, but when ozone enters the body, it reacts with lipids and amino acids, and those create ozonides or peroxides. And depending upon what lipid or what amino acid inter it interacts with, is going to create these types of, they call them almost like ozonide species, species of ozonides. It's kind of a weird term, but it just basically means there's all different types of ozonides that can, can get created in the body. And that's very interesting, right? Because you would think it's just ozone, right? And it's going to do what ozone does. But when you learn that it can create all these different forms of ozonides, when you start to look at the research and what ozone can do for your body, it's, it starts to click over because it does so much. And that's kind of what leads us to oxygen utilization as well, right? And... um if you don't mind, I'd like to just kind of jump right into that. And then hopefully after I get done going over all this, it'll answer a lot of the questions that maybe you've gotten or maybe maybe not, and we can answer those. But that was kind of my idea was to kind of like go over it and then hopefully that would answer some of the questions that people have. Um, and there is a few other things I do want to talk about too, as far as like the ozone layer and like how we hear about it on the news, you know, the the scam there with that and all that. But initially, let's talk about oxygen utilization because from what I understand and from what all the research is indicating, all forms of disease are going to begin with our underutilization of oxygen. So our inability to utilize oxygen properly. So, you know, we're as health guys, you know, as, as people, we're all taking nutrients and doing these things to help our bodies be healthy, and at the root of it all, the origin of it all, it comes down to oxygen utilization. And, and that's something we kind of really need to understand. And, um, and how that's measured is important. So I'll just take a brief second on that. Like, how do you measure oxygen utilization? And the way that they've kind of been able to measure it is through your aerobic capacity. So that's going to determine how much CO2 you outgas versus how much O2 you inhale. And the way they, they do that is they put like a mask on you and they'll put you in like on a treadmill and they'll just monitor. And as they turn the treadmill up, you know, that's going to determine your capacity to hold on to O2. But it's the ratio of CO2 to O2 that will determine your oxygen utilization. And what's even more interesting to me than this basic understanding of oxygen utilization is that there was a study done that uh, Schallenberger actually did, who's one of the leading experts in ozone. And he, f he found, I think it was like 100 people he did a test on, and all these people that he tested were considered top health, like the top notch health. They didn't have any diseases or there was nothing going on with them. And 46% of them, of these people in optimal health, had low oxygen utilization levels. And that, that blows me away because these were people of perfect health, right? And 46% of them weren't utilizing oxygen properly. And, uh, and what the conclusion kind of came down to is lifestyle 
stress, like a lot of this stuff that you talk about with the amount of stress we're under nowadays, the amount of iron that's getting into our body. Again, everything you talk about, the overload of PUFAs, you know, this is what's not allowing our body to utilize oxygen properly, even if we're working out, we're eating right, because we're robbing more oxygen to, to contend with all these factors, just like when you talk about magnesium, right? And we have a burn rate of it. And based on how stressed we are, we burn through it. So some people need more or less. And that's what makes it so confusing when people start doing the mag bicarb, you know, they have so many questions because how much do I take and this and that? And it's like, well, we're all in the same boat here as far as like not having an optimal lifestyle, not having optimal nutrition loaded with chemicals, devout of minerals, but it's all a little bit different in how devoured we are and how loaded we are, right? So that's where that dosage thing kind of comes in. I always use the bowel tolerance thing for people, but back to oxygen utilization here, right? So once we kind of understand all this, we understand how it's measured and we understand about the NAD to NADH ratio, we can really start to understand how not only ozone can help us with oxygen utilization, uh, but how oxygen utilization basically governs like almost every function in the body, right? Like from your immune system, uh, from, you know, cytokine production, right? Your antioxidant buffering system, your electron transport chain, and all this is going down to mitochondrial function, right? And how the mitochondria or the metabolic system of the mitochondria, right? Because when we start to look at ozone, we see, oh, it, it depending on oxygen utilization. But when we look at all these things that I mentioned, fat metabolism, mitochondria metabolism, glucose metabolism, protein synthesis, DNA replication, all this is dependent on oxygen utilization, but it's not oxygen in itself. And this gets kind of confusing, but it's actually the NAD to NADH ratio, which I know you're very familiar with that determines that, but that's determinant on oxygen utilization and oxygen. So again, it's one of those words that kind of is saying optimum NAD to NADH ratio is almost saying ox you're utilizing oxygen correctly or you're not. It, it's almost like saying the same thing because they're so codependent on each other. And what's super interesting is if the body doesn't use, utilize oxygen properly, the body will still oxidize NADH to NAD, but it won't, it won't use oxygen to do it. And, and this is where we start to see all forms of dis-ease begin. And this term is known as early onset mitochondrial dysfunction, EOMD. When the body isn't utilizing oxygen properly and it's robbing other areas of the body to oxidize NADH to produce NAD. And um, what happens when that, there's two ways that that can happen. I'm not going to go into so much of the science of that. We can maybe do that later because it's, I've already feel like I've dumped so much science already. It's, it's a lot to take in, but there's two ways that that'll happen when the body's not utilizing oxygen properly. And the cost, this is what's going to blow people away, is that the end result of the cost, because uh, I'm not going to talk about how it does it, because it's a lot. It's a scientific kind of breakdown. But what happens is it'll elevate our cortisol in exchange to do this. It'll rob our T3 hormone. It'll produce lactic acid or acidosis and increase free radicals. So if our body can't utilize oxygen properly, right, which means the NADH to NAD ratio isn't being balanced properly. Again, they're kind of interchangeably. These are the things that happen. Our cortisol gets elevated. Our T3 hormone gets robbed and utilized. And this helps, this produces more acid in the cell, right? And so, so many people are out there, how do I get alkaline and all this stuff? And they're drinking alkaline water and it's hitting their stomach acid. It's making things worse. Look, when we really want to talk about being alkaline and all this stuff, it gets into the cell, okay? And, and, and when you understand that most of us aren't utilizing oxygen properly, now it makes sense why so many of us have adrenal fatigue. 
why so many of us have hypothyroid symptoms, right? We maybe we're not hypothyroid, you know, whatever, but you always hear that. Like you think you have hypothyroidism, but really you just have the symptoms of it. But anyways, and then acidosis and then obviously free radical increase, which leads to inflammation. So if people need to replay that and hear that again, I would, if you're confused, do that because it's a lot. But the main thing to understand is that if our body is not utilizing oxygen properly, we're setting our body up to have elevated cortisol, robbing our T3 hormones, producing acidosis or lactic acid, which creates acidosis over time, and which also increases our free radicals. And um, once we understand how we can improve oxygen utilization through ozone, now we kind of have this origin of any protocol we're doing or the backbone of any protocol we're doing. Because when I first got into ozone, I thought, man, I could, I could hurt myself here. Right? I could oxidize myself until I learned that you can't. And so I was like, maybe I need to do all these other things first before I start doing ozone so I don't harm myself. But it's, it's actually the opposite is true. Like we need to start understanding we have to utilize oxygen properly and we can do that through these ozonides, right? And, th and that is going to set us up. That's the backbone to whatever protocol we're doing because once we can have proper utilization of oxygen, all the nutrients we take will actually kind of go to work for us because something that's interesting about antioxidants because you think, oh, okay. We're not utilizing oxygen properly. Let's take antioxidants. This will kind of help us buffer that out. And antioxidants, they, they can only work as good enough as our antioxidant buffering system, enzymes in our antioxidant buffering system, the enzymes. So they, they will help. Okay. They, these, you know, the stuff I'm all about, the vitamin C, the stuff, the vitamin E, you know, I take all your vitamin E. We, we have to take these antioxidants, but they only support our antioxidant buffering system. They don't improve the production of those enzymes. And ozonides do that. Ozone does that. So not only is it supporting, it's improving production. So now, again, the backbone, if we take vitamin E and we take the vitamin C, the whole food forms, right, like that you offer, and we have those ozonides in there. Now we're going to see a, a reversal of maybe something that is underlying, right? And, 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 you know, so many people get benefits just by taking these antioxidants. Don't get me wrong. Like, you know, like for myself for years before I did ozone, I noticed massive benefits from taking massive amounts of antioxidants. But it wasn't until I understood ozone and ozonides that I was starting to get underneath the, the root cause of it all and then now that i've got the ozonides in my body with your cfl protocol like excuse my french but holy shit like i just feel amazed like it was like you and i've been text messaging each other like back and forth because it's like every day you start noticing like an increase in wellness and well-being and clarity and you start feeling different than you've ever felt and like you've got every tool in the book that, you know, like there's not any tool that you and I couldn't get that, you know, that's out there. And we've pretty much tried them all. And you start doing ozone and you're like, holy shit, like there's something here. Just to coin you, the holy grail, right? You're like, holy crap, this is like the holy grail, right? Because it's like, it's working so well with what you're already doing. And, um, and that's because it's going to that root cause. And... You know, and I hope I didn't lose anyone there. I probably did, but I'll, I'll digress if you want to redirect me maybe on the NADH to NAD and why that's important or not. But um, that was awesome. No, that was, I loved it. <laughs> no, no, I'm glad you brought up antioxidants too. And, and uh, all this stuff works together. Like your supplements I love. Um, and it, it all supports, like you said, ozone's like the ozone therapy is like the backbone. Um, it just supports everything else you're doing. Um, but I've been taking <clears throat> six capsules of my NAD power, which is 
nice dynamite for him, B3. And I think you've been slamming it too, and that increases the NAD, and there's a really cool synergy there between that form of B3 that's safer than niacin and ozone therapy. Uh, definitely gets you lit up. <laughs> it, it does, because we, we, what we have to understand, because a lot of times when I talk about ozone, it's all, I always say, like I told you, I was like, hey, it's all about the NADH to NAD ratio. Like, it, that ratio is important, and it's like 700, it's supposed to be like 700 to 1. But what happens is we have NADH, and the oxidized form of that is NAD, right? So by supplementing NAD, you're kind of shortcutting that process a little bit, and you're giving your body exactly what it needs because the NAD needs to be the 700, and the NADH needs to be the 1. So as soon as that ratio's off, what happens? Well, it that's what I talk about. Elevated cortisol, T3 production gets increased. Your body robs it. You produce acidosis in the body. Free radicals increase. Because the body will still make that, ha that reaction happen. It has to. Because that reaction, the NADH, the NAD reaction is... The gatekeeper to your DNA replication, all protein synthesis, fat metabolism, glucose metabolism, and mitochondrial metabolism. So everything is dependent on this. And, and the NAD and NADH does way more than just that. Like, I'm just giving the cliff note of it, right? And it's still a lot, but it's, it's everything. So if we don't utilize oxygen properly, again, I, I've already said it once, but I'm going to say it again, then the body will start to rob from other parts and there's a cost and that's the elevated cortisol the t3 hormone gets gobbled up acidosis free radicals increase inflammation so <laughs> i think if we keep <laughs> this over and over again it'll stick because it took me reading it over and over for it to really connect because it's a lot yeah yeah i know douglas wallace i i think this is foundational stuff and if people can wrap their head around it it is rather simplistic versus chasing symptoms and I have X, Y disease, like everyone always, you know, uh, solidifies and keeps reciting their mantra of what's wrong with them and their disease state and it's so complicated and I need these specific supplements to heal this specific organ and it's not, it's not that complicated. Um, I like Douglas Wallace that discovered that we only inherit um, our mitochondrial DNA from our mother's side, um, he says that pretty much all chronic disease is caused by mitochondrial dysfunction. And that's such a beautifully simplistic way to view health, right? <laughs> right. And that's based on oxygen utilization, right? Um, and then uh, Schallenberger even has a term called early onset mitochondrial dysfunction, which leads to mitochondrial dysfunction, which is it's kind of interesting. Uh, but yeah, that's it. So to add to what you said before we got cut off, uh, Schallenberger has a term called uh, early onset mitochondrial dysfunction, which leads to mitochondrial dysfunction. Um, so it's just kind of interesting because it's right aligned right in line with what you mentioned uh about being you know it's the root the root cause right and again like like you had said before we got cut off um we're doing all these things to figure out why we're trying to add this in and add that in but when we start to understand oxygen utilization and our mitochondria that things start to kind of it allows us to have an understanding at the origin or the root to what might be dysfunctioning in our body um, because, you know, it's so easy for us to get caught on the dis-ease, right? Or the symptom of that dis-ease. And then we treat it almost allopathically, holistically. When I say that allopathically, I'm talking more in the sense of how we look at treating. You know, it's like allopathic model treats symptoms. But it does it unnaturally typically like there's no natural remedies and what i notice in the holistic realm is that we kind of do the same thing but we do it with natural means which makes it holistic but the thinking hasn't shifted and when you start understanding what we were talking about prior and oxygen utilization and the mitochondria 
now you start to kind of really truly understand how to heal yourself. So. That's a really good point. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I like what you said earlier that ozonides increase oxygen utilization because that was really what kind of like converted me to be open to using ozone therapy myself. Um, what are the references that you found on ozonides? Like, can people just search ozonides PubMed and they'll see a bunch of studies come up about them? Or is it, do you kind of have to dig? No, yeah, there, you know, one thing that's very interesting about ozone is that it's, it, they tried really hard to bash it and not to take away from your question because we're going to go, we're going to go into that. We're going to answer that. But just think about how when you turn on the TV, sometimes they'll say, oh, the ozone layer is high today, right? And so when you start hearing about ozone therapy, you've already been indoctrinated prior to applying ozone you know, therapy in your body. We've all been indoctrinated that ozone's bad, right? Because when ozone levels increase, that means there's more pollution, right, in the air. And just to demystify that, the only the reason they say that is because ozone is easy to measure, and instead of saying it, there's heavy pollution in the air and it's these forms of pollution, they just say the ozone is high. They say that the, the ozone levels are high because that's nature's way, that's God's way of cleaning up the pollution is ozone. So again, instead of saying oh, there's a lot of arsenic or whatever, aluminum in the air, and it's heavy pollution, heavy smog, they're saying there's heavy ozone in the air. And again, that's because nature is saying, oh, i got to clean all this crap up. And it's easier to measure ozone than it is to measure these pollutants. So um, so anyways, I wanted to, <laughs> to mention that because th this is part of where I was – miseducated for so long because and thinking that ozone could harm me right that's a good point yeah people don't think about asbestos coming off their brake pads and the stuff coming off the tires and there's a million things that are worse than ozone right <laughs> that i mean breathing it like there's a right. lot bigger and, concerns. and to add to that that you know you when you research ozone and ozonides you know yet yeah, there are my, my point to all this is the information has been kind of pushed under the rug for a reason. They don't want you to know how powerful ozone can be for you because a it's, it's cost pennies to make once you have your machine in your O2 tank. And the fact that it goes to the root or the origin of all dis ease or lack of oxygen utilization, it's kind of the same term there in a way, all of a sudden, we don't need to be so confused on what to do next because we understand the root and the origin of it all. And, and again, the reason why they're telling you the ozone levels are high isn't because it's ozone that's the issue. That's nature's way of cleaning up the pollutants that are in the air. And again, it's way cheaper to measure the ozone than to measure the pollutants. And to go into what you said about the lungs, well, you know, the, the cells, the lungs, only are one cell layer thick. So they're extremely fragile. They, there's not, there's a lot of things that can harm your lungs. You know, like uh, not just ozone. So I guess where I'm getting at with that is, yeah, you, you're not supposed to breathe ozone directly into the, the body because, again, ozone wants to react with lipids and amino acids to create ozonides. That's how we get the benefit of ozone. If we breathe it directly into our lungs, it doesn't work like that. So it's going to be an irritant. And also to add, in order for it to actually harm your lungs, in order for ozone to harm your lungs, it's damn near impossible to breathe in that much ozone. It's like saying you can drown from drinking too much water. Yes, it's true. It can happen. And it can you can die if you drink too much water. But the amount of water you'd have to drink, right, you have to like choke on it. Right, like, uh, 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 uh. you just like completely <laughs> flood your lungs with it, and who's gonna do that? Right, it's like damn near impossible. And and again, to go back to the ozone, if you breathe in a little bit of ozone, you're gonna start coughing. 
So you're not going to keep breathing it in. You're going to be calm. You're going to be like, get this out of here. And having a little bit of a reaction, a little bit of cough and breathing in too much ozone isn't going to harm you. You know, and you can immediately uh, mitigate it with vitamin C, by the way. So I remember that day you had told me, you're like, hey, I, I breathed it in and I just feel like it's in my lung. I'm like, take some vitamin C, take your whole food vitamin C, bro. And boom, the reaction stops. It helps. So, um, yeah, yeah, that's the warning I give people when they make ozonated water now, because if you take a whiff while you're drinking and it's really strong, uh, you could cough. <laughs> <laughs> right. Yeah. Yeah. We always, you know, when you're making the ozonated water, uh, when you pull it off and you're done, you turn your machine off, always blow, always blow down into the cup or whatever it's in. And that'll blow that gas that's kind of been sitting on top, but blow it out. And then when you drink it, you know, obviously don't just breathe in your nose, just, just drink it without inhaling it or smelling it. We intuitively do that, though, because that's just our nature to smell something a little bit before we drink it. It's like a probably a protective natural response we have right before we put something in our body to smell it. Right. <laughs> it's kind of interesting. Uh, but I, I feel like that's just like this natural primal instinct we have is to kind of like smell things or taste it, you know, before we eat them or drink them, especially if we're not knowing what it is. You know, uh, you know, that again. I know most of us don't smell water, but we know it's coming from the same source we've been drinking forever. But I, I maybe we do. I don't know. Sometimes, like you know, when you see a dirty cup, what do you do? You look at it. You kind of like question: Should I use this cup or not? What do you do? You just look at it. No, you stick your nose in there. You kind of give it a little smell. So it's like your underwear. You see the <laughs> these dirty underwear. Are these underwear dirty or not? What do you do? Just look at them. Like yeah, you might see some some stains here and there, but you, you get down in there and you give it a good whiff. <laughs> <laughs> If you're going to put them on or not, right? <laughs> how, how dirty are they? <laughs> but anyways, yeah, just to kind of like go into that, those are some of the things that when I first got into ozone, it popped up, you know, the ozone layer in the atmosphere, uh, ozone can harm your lungs. And then you'll also research when you see things, it'll say uh, ozone can hurt your eyes. You got ozone in your, in your eyes, you know, the gas directly in your eyes. But again, same situation. Your eyeball is extremely sensitive to almost anything, any type of smoke, not just ozone. And yeah, it can irritate the eye. But does that mean ozone irritates the eyes? And the answer to that question is actually no. I know that's like so contradicted to what I just said, but hear me out. If you bubble ozone in saline and you drop that ozonated saline in your eye, that's one of the most powerful therapies for cataracts. So... That's why ozone doesn't harm the eye unless it's in the ga gaseous form. But when it's bound to minerals and it's creating these ozonides and peroxides, it's completely safe. And, and also to add, if you bubble ozone gas in olive oil, and then you can actually breathe that through basically a percolator. So then now you can actually breathe the ozone because it's bound to those lipids and creating ozonides. And those can go into your lungs. And that's a powerful therapy for asthma. It's a powerful therapy for bronchitis or any type of lung condition. So when we see these things about ozone and how it can be harmful, it, once we understand what's really going on, you understand that it's actually not, not harmful. Like, uh, can you breathe ozone? Yes, it has to be breathed through olive oil, though. Can you put ozone in your eye? Yes, but it has to be bubbled through saline. And then every other form of ozone, like you can go direct gas in your ear, direct gas in your ass, right? Sorry, it rhymed, so I just went with it. Um, in your bum, right? And there's no problem there because now the gas can actually react with the lipids and the amino acids like it wants to do naturally to create those ozonides or reactive oxygen species, that's kind of another term for it, or peroxide. It's like three terms for the same thing. And, and that's why it's so confusing when you learn about these things, because you think one thing means something different than the other. But when you start to understand the root, science has done this, I feel like, almost, I hate to say it's a conspiracy, but it's it's confusing as hell, right? When you're like, oh, well, what is this? <laughs> But as we start to understand spirituality, and not to go on this tangent, but a lot of like the names of God, there's several, there's 72 names of God, you know, so the, 
the Muslims are saying, no, God is Allah. And then the Jews are saying, no, God is Yahweh. And they're all fighting about the, who's God. But in reality, it's just, they're all saying the same thing. They're all saying the same thing. You know? And, and anyways, so. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, that's awesome. <laughs> and um, what what really got me too, I mean, besides the oxygen utilization, the whole other flip side to ozone therapy um, benefits is it's, uh, it's power against yeast, mold, fungus, bacteria, um, anaerobic bacteria, right? And parasites. Because I think everyone's full of those. You know, in the last two years, everyone went full germaphobe. But I mean, people were gross before this, this whole situation, people were full of not only, you know, viruses, but tons of other things that were just a constant burden on their system. Right. Like, I think the stats right. are like 50% of homes in the U S have mold in them and stuff. <laughs> no, absolutely. And that's when you start to go above oxygen utilization, you start seeing all these other processes that happens with the ozonides as far as like cytokine production. And those are our immune signalers, right? Those are going to help keep the viral load in check but it, if a virus has re been replicated and that helps with viral replication that's can these cytokines can signal cells to stop viral replication and that that can be de that's dependent not de super dependent on but it's improved and increased through exposure to ozonides so if you put these ozonides in you so now the body can actually it's like it gets a supercharge. The immune system just gets a supercharge of what exactly it needs to go out and do what it wants to do. But if your body's bombarded with parasites or viruses, bacteria, I won't say bombarded, just say you have a load, just say you have a load, that slow load that's continually in the body, that's robbing your body of energy because your body's having to deal with it. But when you can bring ozonides or ozone into your body, you just gave your immune system everything it needs to send those signalers out, those immune signalers, those cytokines. And there's all different types of cytokines, right, uh, that, that can go out and really kind of keep things in checks and balance, if you will. Um, and that kind of relieves into the antioxidant buffering system, the electron transport chain. Um, because one thing about ozonide that's cool about the anti antioxidant buffering system, I mentioned you know, that it improves production and activity. But again, if, if we supplement foods, we, we can't really create those enzymes. We can't activate that production of enzymes like ozonide does. But when we start looking at specific antioxidants like glutathione, only ozonides can increase production of glutathione. That's so, awesome. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah. I think they're, it's copper dependent too, like superoxide, dismutase, yeah, and Absolutely. Calories. Absolutely mm -hmm. it is. Absolutely it is. And copper with the yeah. oxygen utilization, which I've been obsessed with and I'm having Morley on yeah. next. And so, um, I yeah. always like to hear his take on, on copper and oxygen. And I think there's a whole like elephant in the room, the CO2 piece that's not well understood. Like I think Ray Pete spearheaded that knowledge, but the whole carbon dioxide thing is so misunderstood, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. We need to understand that, you know, we inhale O2, we exhale CO2 every second of our, you know, that's happening more than any other reaction in the body. I would say maybe I'm wrong on that, but I think about like just uh, nutrients for the body. We're breathing in more than we're drinking or we're eating. Right. So there's a deep connection there. When you, when you start to understand this, you understand the origin. I'm big on that. Like, what's the reason why? Right. And then it's like, Oh, because of this. And then it's like, why? And then you find out, Oh, it's because of that. And then why? Well, because of this again. And it's like, shit, where's the root to it all. Right. And that's why I love ozone and oxygen therapy so much because it kind of, you don't have to worry about all that shit, you know, anymore. You don't have to worry about learning this, or that you just. Right. It, it could be because I'm in a new environment, but the last few days being moving out of state, it, 8,000 feet, I feel like I'm detoxing or going through like a Herxheimer's reaction. And I know the higher elevation you go, the more CO2 you retain. And right. the more CO2 you have, the more oxygen. Um, I think I think it increases oxygen utilization, I'm pretty sure. Well, it, it does in your body because you're not getting enough of it. So it's going to increase the utilization of oxygen because you're getting too much CO2 and not enough in your breath. But it's actually putting more stress on your body 
That's mm. why when you go to lower elevation, all of a sudden you're a freaking crouching tiger, hidden dragon. <laughs> and that's why they train in higher altitude because you're, re you're restricting oxygen and your body's having to adapt to that, which then increases oxygen utilization. You see what I'm saying? And then when you go back down to lower altitudes, your body goes, oh, now I have enough oxygen. So your body's been adapted to having less. Now you're lower altitude. You're a crouching tiger hidden dragon. Like, I got oxygen like crazy. So the body's already ramped up. And that's why they uh, athletes perform better when they come off the mountain. But that's why they train on top of the mountain. Does that make sense? It does. Yeah, it's, it's, it's fascinating. I definitely feel like the ozone therapy's hit me harder up here. It's, it's an interesting uh, ab point. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, absolutely. It will. I mean, I struggle in Colorado when I'm way up high. Like I, sometimes I just get the oxygen tanks and that alone helps. Um, I can only imagine with, you know, having ozone and then, yeah, everything you're, but Matt, you just put yourself under massive stress, brother. Like you just mm -hmm. moved kind of not on a whim, but you know, it wasn't in your plan probably six months ago to move. So it's, it's, think about that stress. Think about the stress of just packing and all of that and getting your new house and dealing with all of that, setting up your, your Wi-Fi, setting up all your stuff in your new home. You just got finished doing that in your other home. You know, you're, you're still working on your other home. And so when you told me you're moving and you're telling me everything's going on as a, as a, someone who's, you know, we're both healers, but sometimes it's hard when you're in it to see it. I was seeing you from the outside looking in and go, Oh man, that's a lot of stress on that. I just pray for Matt, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, I appreciate it. Well, there's, there's a lot of benefits yeah. and one of the many is being closer to you. So hopefully we can meet up soon. <laughs> yeah. But now that you're in Colorado, it'd be easy. Again, like I said, we go up there quite a bit, so we'll definitely <laughs> connect in the next six months for sure. I love it. What, one question I had for you, Charles, did, did you ever experiment with MMS? Cause I get asked that like once a month, what do you think about, you know, miracle mineral solution? And I had, I had my friends projectile vomit from taking that stuff. Yeah, that's like a, yeah. You know, I, you know, shit, 12, 13 years ago, I got introduced to it and I was vegan. I remember the guy was on, I think one radio network with Patrick Timponi talking about it. He had like the guy that was over in Africa treating, what was he too, treating malaria or something with it? But so anyway, I started taking it and a very similar reaction. I couldn't do it twice a day. By like the fifth or sixth day, I was just so, my body intuitively was just like, no. But I didn't have malaria either. I just think it's a very harsh and it, intense therapy, like for the body. Cause I mean, it tastes like freaking chlorine or like pool water stuff. You know, it just it tastes off. So, um, I, I feel like there's a thousand ways to skin a cat and that one way, that way, almost if I had malaria, maybe I'd look at it, but in my health and where I'm at today, I don't see a use for it just because my intuition, it says no, but not just that. My physical is like, no, like right. I, I don't want to do it. That's, look, some certain therapies can be amazing on paper. Right. But then when you actually go to try to do them, if they're, not gonna it's just you know it's gonna be hard too hard to do or your body you have to struggle so much to do it and how effective can it really be because now it's creating more stress right you're like oh i gotta take this stuff and you have this i so the power of belief and all this kind of goes out the window because now you're stressed because you have to take this stuff and i don't know that that's my take on it i think that it's powerful though and obviously if we were in a third world country and, you know, we didn't have access to all the tools that we have access to here in the States. I mean, yeah, well, why not? Right. Why not try MMS? But for me, like that, that was my experience of it. And that's kind of where I'm at. Yeah. My maybe, mind is at it with it now, you know, maybe it was Ebola. I know I listened to Dave yeah, Asprey's yeah, show. Was, yeah. It was a boring one on ozone. It was like 80% politics and like 20% about ozone. <laughs> Oh, wow. Just the yeah. politics of using, you know, a natural therapy in another country or whatever, South Africa or something. Yeah. But um, yeah, so so with your machine, so you just came out with a, a cold plasma quartz um, medical grade ozone machine. And 
what's inside of that thing? Like there are there little elves like on a treadmill or like what? <laughs> so so when we first came out, you know, we were partnering up with someone who was developing cold plasma, right? And when I first got into ozone, I got into it uh, via what made me like really hook on and sinker on what to go with. I saw Tesla's invention of cold plasma. So Tesla didn't invent ozone. Ozone was in, you know invented or how to produce ozone was done in Germany and Europe long before Tesla did it. But Tesla created cold plasma ozone generators because of the corona discharge generators that were on the market. They, they would create heat and they would burn out and they would fail. And that's typically what you see on the market today is some type of corona uh, discharge that has a fans inside of it. It'll have ceramic inside these cells, or it'll have titanium, some type of metal. And that's how they're creating the ozone. Uh, Tesla said, no, look, I'm going to create it in a cold plasma tube. Well, the catch-22 with that is you can't produce strong ozone with a cold plasma. So our generators aren't cold plasma. They're, they're cold quartz. So it isn't a cold it's a type of corona discharge but it doesn't have a fan there's no metal in it there's no ceramic inside of it it's just quartz and that was something that was extremely important to me because a i all the research that i saw on ceramic it was you know the the types of ceramic being used a lot of it comes all these parts come from china so the grade of ceramics not talked about you see people that sell ozone machines with ceramic in there You know, they'll try to convince you. But the fact that they have to have a page up trying to convince you that it's safe is a red flag because what they're not talking about is because in a lot of these articles, there's truth to what these people say. But they don't. The one thing they don't talk about is the hardness scale or the quality of the ceramic. And there's no ceramic out there, from what I understand, that's going to be of the high, high enough quality to be able to not basically create um, aluminum because there's aluminum in a lot of this ceramic. And so now you're like, again, when you're sending oxygen into a machine and then you have a spark and you're trying to create ozone, that's a very volatile reaction and it's unstable because you, all the electrons aren't shared. So that's why it's important that you get the ozone in your body ASAP when you make it from a clean machine so that it can create the ozonides when we talk about internal use, but when we're talking about just in general production of it, it's important because again, you don't want to be breaking down that ceramic and, you know, exposure to aluminum. Um, and the same, same goes with titanium and other metals. What's the grade? It's just like steel. Steel's not just steel, right? The steel in a Ferrari is different than a steel in a Kia, right? There's different grades of steel. The same with knives. Like you can get really nice knives from Japan that steel is different than Walmart knife steel, right? And what we're finding out is that there's other things in the metals. And so this is why I stayed away when I wanted to develop this machine. I was like, okay, look, I don't want to do cold plasma. I mean, actually, I did want to do cold plasma, but I couldn't find – there was no technology that existed that made strong enough ozone that would allow you to be able to make an ozonated uh, – a, a hardcore ozonated water – like a super strong ozonated water, but also ozonated olive oil. And and not to add to the fact that if you're going to do ozone cupping, um, that you, again, you can't get your gamma high enough with the cold plasma tubes. You, you just can't. I mean, the most gamma that I'm seeing out of these cold plasma technology was around 70 to 80. And again, that that's 70 to 80 gamma. That's strong. But you, what I found in my research and talking with the people in the ozone community, a lot of these guys had cancer and they beat it with ozone. And when we start talking about dosage, this is where things start to kind of get interesting because a lot of these guys that actually used ozone in their therapy for cancer or whatever, they were getting up to like 90, 100 gamma internally and they had to work up to that. But when you talk about using ozone like the way i would train you i would never have anyone go that high a dosage and you know i've talked about this i mean there's a clinic down in uh south america that's done more ozone than anyone and they've kind of come up with the curriculum or the safe zone to use ozone and they're saying 20 to 40 gamma max right 
is, is the, the highest strength you want to go to. But you have to understand that that's a super safeguard and that the people going into these clinics were extremely toxic. Like they, they weren't on the CFL protocol. They weren't drinking clean water. They weren't worried about iron mitigation. They weren't worried about these things. These were just like people coming off the street. So when you look at that, it's like, yeah, don't do, you can't, those people can't handle strong ozone. They're going to have a massive detox reaction because the body's going to be cleaning everything up and their channels of elimination aren't open and they're going to retoxify their body or have a Herzheimer reaction. So going back to the machines and the technology that exists and why we went with just cold courts, I wanted to create something again that allowed somebody to have produce extremely strong a commercial grade strength ozone but also be able to dial it down if they were extremely toxic and they weren't just coming off the street and they or they say they had uh ms or they had a massive viral load they say they had uh hepatitis or hiv you know like these types of people that are in that state they they have to start with very low ozone concentrations so I wanted to have a machine that could do all of that because that's the problem with a lot of these machines on the market. And why we, again, another reason why we developed ours is like, oh, I could find one that like produced strong ozone, but it had ceramic in it, you know, um, or it had titanium in it. And then, and vice versa, if I found one that, you know, didn't have those things, it, it just wasn't strong enough. It, it, it couldn't produce it strong enough or it didn't have a variable output. Like the first machines that, you know, I was working with, that was my old ozone partner. Right. And that, I, I hate to say this, but he straight up lied. Those were not cold plasma machines. And that's what he put on the thing. And that's what I was telling you. Cause that's what he told me. <laughs> he even sent me a picture of a generator with a cold plasma tube in it. I thought that was the machine. I went and opened up after I purchased from him. And I found out that it was just another ozone company that made it. And they make all these other crappy machines. And I opened it up. I'm like, I sent him a picture. I'm like, hey, bro, where's the cold plasma tube? He's like, oh, we had to switch to a ceramic, cold, uh, Corona ceramic discharge. And I'm like, but you write on the machine cold plasma. Like, why didn't you take that off? Why is that all over your website? And you're charging like $3,000 for this machine. And he just kind of like didn't want to talk about that. <laughs> so I actually got... I got pretty pissed off, bro, because I had, you bought the machine, <laughs> you did. And I'm like, oh my God, I'm like this is gonna jeopardize my relationship with Matt. This is gonna jeopardize my relationship with the 30 to 40 other people that I had already sold his machine to. And come to find out it's a bunch of BS. He's a light line and it's ceramic Corona discharge. So yeah. <laughs> I get a little emotional about that, you know, because that was a big deal. But, and I, and I talked to my wife and I just, she was like, you just need to be up front with Matt. And I was like, you know what? I, I, I was so nervous to reach out to you because I just felt like I had, hadn't done my research. Correct. I was literally tricked. I was tricked. And, and this again was another reason why I created my own machine. And I made me go deeper into the research. I reached out to Ed McCabe, who's like wrote the book, Flood Your Body with Oxygen. And he connected me with, all the people in the US and Canada that make ozone. He goes, here's the list of everyone who manufactures ozone machines. Here's some of the master ozone scientists. Call these guys, talk to everybody because everyone has their own school of thought on what makes, how to make ozone, right? But one thing that I found doing all that research and talking to all those people is any type of ozone cell that has ceramic or metal in it, that only the people that sold them were the people saying it was safe. And the people that, and a lot of these people that I talked to that said it wasn't safe, they didn't even sell those machines. They just, they just knew about it. And they were just experts in it. And they'd use it in clinical settings. And they were the ones coming out saying that, hey, you know, like, to be honest, we don't really know. Here's the reason why. And a lot of it came down to parts. And where do you get your parts? And 98% of all the parts come from China. It might say made in the USA, it's more or less assembled in the USA. And ours, 
isn't done like that. Like our, we get as many American parts as we can. You know, obviously the outside of that box comes from Taiwan or somewhere. It doesn't even, you know, come from the Republic of China per se, even though Taiwan's part of it. But the internal parts is what you need to be careful of. And if you're, those parts are coming from China, which that original machine I saw opened up, um, it's a company called Ozotech. I just gave away his shit. He's going to be pretty upset about that probably, but <laughs> that's what I saw. And, and the thing is about his machine, it's hard to go back and forth and bounce around here. You know, reline me up if you need to. I just get emotional when all this happened because so much was going on. But whenever I uh, opened, that's how I found out is I opened up the machine and saw Ozotech there. And then I looked up Ozotech and it was ceramic. So that, that, that company makes ozone mainly for water purification for massive industrial or commercial use. And all of it comes from China. All the parts come from China. And the big thing that was the issue from the main scientists that I talked to are the purest in the ozone community, if you will, because they were the ones really worried about this. They were like, look, it's not so much that these things are the issue so much. Like it's not so much that it comes from China, that it's an issue. The issue is that there's no quality control. So you might get two or three machines that are pretty good. But the fifth, fourth, eighth, tenth, twelfth, they, what they noticed is that the parts, the quality changed. The, the quality of the parts changed. There wasn't any quality control. And this goes right in line with what we deal in the herbal community, sourcing herbs from China. Like they'll, they'll lie to you. They'll send you a good C of A. They'll send you a few batches of some good stuff. And then later down the road, they'll sneak in some shiesty stuff on you. And this has happened to us. Is why we don't source anything from China anymore because we we can't we can't keep losing money, right? Off the lack of quality control, it just doesn't exist over there. And so, in our machine, we wanted to make sure that our internal parts were safe and didn't matter if there was any. We didn't want any contradictive information out on the market. Right. Because, again, I, I was never intending on developing my own machine. It, that, that was never the intention. I was just going to team up with my old ozone guy and we were going to partner up. And that's why I did everything I did initially, you know, but through me un discovering, uncovering the lies, it led me down this journey to understand ozone and how it's made. And then I looked at all the other machines on the market and talking to all these scientists, I mean, Ed McCabe was the man. I mean, he he helped, and so that's what led us to this machine through his like, hey, reach out to all these people. And you know, months, a few months had went by, and I had done that. You know, and my wife thought I was crazy. She's like, why do you keep talking to all these people? Why are you keep wasting all this time doing this? I'm like, I just got to know. Like, I we're because it was never the intention of reach out to these people to make your own machine. It was, I needed to reach out to these people to find out the truth. Like, what's the truth? Because I've been lied to. And that was the fuel that pushed me to just get on the phone, email, and talk to all these people. And just, again, through all those conversations with all those different people, we were able to create our own machine. Made in America, by Americans, with American parts. And cl it's clean. It's just a quartz cell. So inside these ozone machines, you have these cells, and that's what creates the ozone, okay? And you, from what I understand, you know, cold plasma was the best, but it couldn't make it strong. But it was clean because it was just a quartz tube and plasma generated in between the two. So that was clean ozone. And obviously those machines, when you start to research them, they had lifetime warranties on them. They lasted forever. He never had any burn up. They didn't create excess heat but it wasn't strong enough. Well, we found a very similar technology without using plasma, but still adhered to the quartz, 100% quartz. But it produced high strength ozone. And you know, you can see on our chart there how high in strength the ozone can be. And we can even put another cell in that same machine and get the numbers up to like 150 gamma. But there's really no need to go that high at this point. I mean, if you're wanting to use it specifically for making ozonated olive oil, we could develop that. Like if you wanted just a big mother machine or if you're wanting to purify like massive amounts of water, say like in a pool or something like that, 
then it would make sense to do that. Uh, but there's really no need uh, to go that high in strength. Well, I appreciate your, come, appreciate yeah, your integrity. Did I, <laughs> <laughs> did I cover everything? I know I kind of went on some tangents and went here and there, but I just wanted to kind of, I wanted to divulge everything that I learned and just be 100% transparent because I know people saw it. Yeah. Well, it's, it's funny. It's kind of like my journey with algae oil, finding out that's super toxic and astaxanthin, which is pretty much equally as toxic. And my whole journey with that and, and coming out and doing a 180 and telling people, hey, I was wrong. You know, it's actually vitamin E. It's not omega threes that you need, you know, <laughs> so right. appreciate right. you. Uh, I think the important thing is that you corrected and most people when, you know, especially if there's money involved, they'll just keep keep the ball rolling because, hey, I'm, you know, selling to retards who they're, they're not going to know, you know, what they're not yeah, going to figure I, it yeah, out. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that could have been, it would have been so easy to do. I had everything set up, you know, mm -hmm. and, uh, but no, I, you know, I can't do that. I mean, I didn't want to use the machine after that. So what am I going to do? Post myself <laughs> fake using this machine? <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I, you know, that's not what got us here, right, Matt? Like we mm -hmm. didn't start helping people because we wanted, we needed money. It was never about money. It was all about help. You know, because similar journey, both of us and how we got into this again to help people. It's not about, I never thought I would be doing this. I never thought this would, you know, make a living for myself. I just wanted people to get better because I got better and I saw so many people sick, but we're in a day and age now to where people that have genuine heartfelt intentions are reaping the same benefits of the corrupt people. And to me, that is what this whole shift is, this whole new thing we're in, right? That, you know, it's, it's a shift in awareness, a shift in consciousness. And with that, the people, the meek are inheriting the earth, right? And, and we're those people because we're not, it's not about money for us. It's about results and about healing. That's the intention. That's what the energy is focused on. And the other stuff is just like aftermath. I mean, yeah, you know what? We're never going to be multi kajillionaires or whatever. <laughs> Who cares? Who gives a shit? I don't, I don't want all that. Like, what am I going to do with that? I'm going to just give it away. <laughs> I mean, once you have your basic needs met, like, and when you do things from the heart, like, and your intentions are right, you don't give a shit about having all this crap. I mean, like crap, like a, you know, a nice brand new Ferrari or some stupid shit like that. You know, this is the, my son, you know, I bring that up because my son, he's eight, right? So he's always like, dude, these Ferraris are sick. He was a little kid, you know, and I have to explain to him because he's always, he always does this thing to me where he goes like, dad, would you rather have your truck? or a Ferrari, you know? And I was like, I'll take the Ferrari. He's like, what? I'm like, yeah, because I'll sell it and go buy my truck and then I'll pocket a couple of <laughs> money. He's like, no, 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 dad. That's not how the question needs to be answered. He's like, you got to choose. I'm like, well, I choose my truck. He's like, really? I'm like, yeah. I'm like, what the hell am I going to do with the Ferrari? It holds two people. I go, was it me and mommy going to drive around in it? You know, like, what, like drive down my road in my house it's got potholes in it i'm you know like no i want my truck you know so <laughs> i don't know i kind of went off on that tangent there you know but it um it's it's insane to think how certain people are running their companies you know yeah. to me well you, you could have you a know. you could have a whole pool of uh, ozonated olive oil to swim in no i'm just kidding <laughs> right. <laughs> oh man. <laughs> no, it's true. Yeah, I just moved um, close to my friend Garrett here in Colorado, and we used to hang out. He worked at Sprouts in the supplement section, and I still get messages from people that went into those stores, and they're like, "Yeah, I used to see you, Matt, there for three, four hours in the supplement section, picking up bottle after bottle after bottle, looking at the label, and you know, I get." You know, I troll and clown on some products and companies, but I think it's important because there's so much BS out there. And oftentimes us good guys get caught in the in the crossfire, even though our intentions to help people. And um, it's 
it's all about, like you said, finding the truth. And I think a lot of people just kind of give up on looking for that when they have their thing, they have their their company and their message and it's going and they're not interested in advancing the system. But I appreciate that it, you yeah, share that. I mean, and it's very similar to these people. And I, and I hate to say this because I'm not a lot of people are under this, but the forced vaccination and it's like uh, my livelihood. I, and I've had people reach out to me. I'm going to have to like, you know, get this vaccine or quit my job. I can't do that. They're using my livelihood and they're so stressed and so worried about it. And it's like, look, you, that job isn't supporting you then. Mm-hmm. If it's not supporting your morals and values, like get the F out of there. It's just money or fight the system, fight fire with fire, make your own vaccine, vaccine card. I mean, have you guys not seen them? They're fucking handwritten notes. I mean, it's like, it's not like it's real deal. Even the PCR test and all that shit, like they try to put a barcode on it or a, a QR code, scan that QR code. You tell me what happens. They make you think there's this huge database and you can't do all this stuff. And it's just the big, it's a big crock, dude. Like my, uh, I shouldn't divulge all this stuff. I, I mean, maybe we should talk about it more. I don't want to get you in trouble on the podcast or anything, you know, uh, it's your podcast, not mine, but it's all just a bunch of BS, dude. Like it's a big, it's a big lie. Like there's a bunch of clowns running the show, you know, it's like, well, yeah, and, go, and going back to how we started this whole conversation, like you can't get sick. You can't get sick if you're utilizing oxygen properly, period. Impossible. Impossible. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. it, it's, it's physiologically impossible. And it doesn't mean if you do ozone twice or three times, that's never going to happen. But one thing that is cool about doing ozone therapy is that those ozonides can live in your body for up to two weeks after you've done the therapy which is interesting. Wanted to kind of put that out there. Uh, But over continual use and once your oxygen utilization is, is prime and your body's not elevating cortisol to produce the the NADH to NAD ratio. It's not, you know, gobbling up all your T3. It's not producing acid. It's not creating more free radicals. Well, yeah, You, you, you physiologically can't get sick. So, I love it. And going back to what you said, I made a few notes here. You were talking about the ozonated water. I think for, I, don't, I lost count, six, seven, eight years, I've been using the Canadian Sota company and their water ozonator. And it's better. You know, a lot of people that I see post on Instagram or whatever, getting those cheap Amazon, you know, 80 to $100, you're not going to get anything decent for 100 bucks as far as ozone, um, even for water ozonation. From what I've seen, they're just really cheap. And like you said, China parts. But um, yeah, I look at the, the SOTA ones, I think great for like emergency or something like that, or just like yeah, cleaning yeah, yeah, stuff yeah. or yeah. cleaning your you know, humidifier. It, yeah. yeah, you're mm-hmm. going to clean with it, mm-hmm. you know, stuff like that. Why not? But mm-hmm. do not be using that for internal use. It's, it's kind of like where I'm at with that. I'd say mm-hmm. uh, like rectal insufflation use, right? Yeah, because I almost did that. I almost did uh, ozone water, which I was like, you know, I know cold water, which we haven't talked about, holds ozone longer, right? Like you always say, like, make it as cold as possible. And I'm like, how am I going to put ozonated water up my rectum? That was like my question for the last three or four years. And then you introduced me to the the ozone gas insufflation, which is five to 10 minutes instead of 30 to 60 minutes. Like I used to do my coffee enemas, which is really a game changer because... It, where we're at, it's all about time efficiency and quick and efficient, right? So, Right. And doing a rectal insufflation is almost identical to doing autohemotherapy. In autohemotherapy, they have to draw all the blood out of your body. Not all of it, but they draw blood out of your body. They ozonate it. They push it back in your, in your body. So you've got one on your left hand, you got a needle sucking out your blood. On the right hand, you got a needle putting that blood back in. Those therapies cost anywhere from five hundred to a thousand dollars per session, and rectal insufflation, they say, is ninety-eight percent as effective, and it costs pennies. It takes five minutes to do. Like it's real easy. You're only going to put anywhere from two hundred to four hundred mLs starting out right in your body. That's like two ozone parts, and you basically just, you know, push that inside you. We have a video. That in our training on how, how I suggest people do it, how I train, you know, you into in doing it, you know, because there are some nuances. 
but you literally hold that, you push that gas in you, you hold it for 20 to 30 seconds, it's done. It's done. It, you're literally in and out. And out of all the things in the world that we could do, some of these things look amazing, again, on paper, but in reality, it's like, oh, that's going to be too tough. For me, that is coffee enema. I see the benefits. I know I probably need it, but dude, an hour and a half in the morning, that ain't going to happen as frequently as a five-minute ozone insufflation can happen. And if I've got to weigh those two, I'm going with the ozone over the coffee enema. Sorry. You know, it, it's, it's quicker. The effect, I love the effect, you know, of how ozone ins- rectal insufflation makes me feel. But I also love the effect of ozone water, ozone in the ears. I love how all of it makes me feel, uh, which it really is like a big reason why I do it. You know, I, all this science and stuff is cool. But if I don't feel that, what I'm reading, I'm like, meh. It was just like when I first got into cacao, I was like reading about cacao and how awesome it is. And I'd eat it and I'm like, oh, I feel like shit afterwards. And it wasn't until I found the really good stuff that I was like, okay, this is what they're taught. The research indicates. Yeah. Um, yeah. And so that, that was big for me, you know. Adam Bergstrom's really big into his Kabbalah and tonic. I think it's like cacao powder, maple syrup, coffee. Pretty sure that's it. Um and he says that there's some synergy there where the B vitamins and the cacao are activated or something. But yeah, um, like, yeah. cacao's a vasodilator, so I could see that. Yeah, I wanted to ask you too. Um, the books I've been reading on ozone, like we mentioned, uh, Frank Schallenberger, um, but I've also been reading uh, Heal Yourself with Ozone, which is not as good as I thought. It's okay, Paula Horan and. Yeah. Um, things I've been reading, like you mentioned two ozone farts, <laughs> like if you're going to do a rectal insufflation first thing in the morning, I forget which book I read it in, but they were saying you could waste the ozone gas on fecal matter. If you don't have a bowel movement first, that didn't really make okay. sense to me because isn't it going to get absorbed through the intestinal wall or the colon anyway? It, it, exactly. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, the only thing that can happen is if you've got a bag filled up, and you got a piece of fecal matter that's clogging the two, the, the two little openings on the tube. But you'll know. You won't be able to push the bag, right? Mm-hmm. Like the bag won't <laughs> deflate in your body. So that that's misinformation. And again, there's so much misinformation on how to do the therapy. Like initially, I was taught to do direct link to the machine. You know, that's not right either. You want to do the bag and blah, blah, blah. But yeah, ozone reacts almost instantly when it enters the body, especially, especially through the colon. Um, it's, it's instant. And a lot of people that were saying that, you know, the fecal matter could get wasted. Some people even said you need to do an enema before you even do a rectal insufflation. All of that information, I feel like, was like some of that initial information that first came out. And as time has went by and more people have done ozone and there's huge clinics all over the world to do ozone. We now have way more information than ever before. And a lot of that stuff is kind of like, no, that, that's not what happens. Cause it used to be when you did it again, you had to do an enema, you had to, you know, hold it for 30 minutes, the gas. And we're finding out that none of that's true. None of that's true. And again, a lot of that is because we're not allowed to really study it the way we want to and need to. Um, but it is studied and has, there's thousands of peer, re, peer reviewed, uh, studies on ozone therapy. Uh, and I need to find you that link that has like the whole kind of encyclopedia of it all, right. All laid out. But most of that information is coming out of Europe where these big clinics are. And then there's another big clinic in South America. Uh, th- they're the ones that are really the forefront of a lot of the, demystified information like you know only 30 seconds versus 30 minutes and stuff like that but got it yeah, yeah. I, I, I mean you, you feel it right like if because oh, yeah. i pulled out my enema my catheter before and there's been you know fecal matter mm-hmm. stuck in there but i'm like lit up <laughs> right. so i'm like well i didn't get nothing got wasted there <laughs> you know like, i can feel it like you know <laughs> Yeah. Yeah. It doesn't, didn't make sense to me logically. Like all the ozone gas would be like magnetically attracted to a piece of fecal matter and it'd all go in and all be neutralized. I'm like, that just doesn't make sense. So. No, it doesn't. Yeah. <laughs> Interesting. Yeah. Um, so you mentioned urine suppletion, which I really want to try. I haven't done that yet. Um, there's rectal, there's um, vaginal, right? Which is 
women kind of have it easier, right? Because they don't have to stick up the rectum and it's a lot safer, right? Generally. I mean, I, 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 I used to think that, mm. but as my wife started using it and she was starting to use the higher dosages, it would dry her vagina out. Mm. And so, whereas then you can take higher concentrations rectally, we're not seeing that vaginally. However, being able to put, so say there's a lot of women out there that they just can't get pregnant, they have infertility, maybe they got cysts on their ovaries. Going vaginal with the ozone would be their bread and butter because they can get that ozone right on the ovaries, right into the reproductive system of the female body. And that's going to supercharge that area and start to really clean that area up. But you do need to be sure that your your dosage and your concentration is permitted to what you can handle. Because again, like what I experienced with my wife um, was kind of contraindicative of what I was being taught, you know. And she, you know, she's telling me these things, so I'm not her, but I take her opinion. So anyway, she doesn't do the vaginal anymore, really. She she does the rectal, and and she enjoys it way more. I mean, than she she gets the effect. I mean, she got the effect when she did the vaginal, like with the the lung hit. And you feel like you can just breathe in forever, and you feel lit. Hmm. But again, it would it would dry her out. And she said she started noticing kind of some weird stuff with her uh, natural lube production because when a woman's hormones are dialed in right, like you shouldn't need lube. You know what I mean? Like they, she should be like Niagara Falls down there. And she just started, we both started noticing like, okay, we need a TMI, but I mean, where's the lube at, right? She's like, why am I so dry? You know, and then we just stopped that vaginal inflation, just doing rectal, 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 rectal. <laughs> and, uh, and everything went back to normal, which is kind of cool too. Cause it's like, even if you do too much, it's not like it's, gonna harm you permanently the body just needs to kind of reset a little like get the the levels down and everything kind of goes back to back to normal yeah yeah be a little vulnerability here i don't know if it's because stress but uh usually people like us in the forefront of health don't like to talk about our issues you know even if they're temporary with people because they're like oh he's supposed to be mr health guy or whatever perfect. but yeah perfect but yeah, my my reason why I got into health was acne and eczema and skin stuff. And um, it's like 99% gone, both of them. But my eczema actually had a flare up uh, the last few days. Um, and I haven't had it in, I don't know, three years or something. Um, I mean, it tends to happen when I'm under stress, but I'm wondering how much of that is the ozone too. Because um, I know that's like fungal from what I've read. But yeah. Yeah, and, and a lot of times with that, it's like you're just you're breaking it down, you're getting rid of it, and then it's like it's virulent. So it's like <laughs> flaring out to try to keep going, keep moving, keep replicating, right? And so it can kind of come out. And people that I've worked with with certain um, issues, they'll notice that exact same thing that you know they'll kind of be on top of something, and then they start doing ozone. And it starts to kind of flare things up again and things. But one thing that will notice is it'll flare it up in a different spot or a different area, and it won't necessarily be the same. And that, to me, is just saying, like, that's the body's way of, you know, it's just a little too it's a little too much. That's that Hertzheimer reaction. That's like it's a little bit too much ozone. You know, it's a little too strong. This, is, again, is kind of goes back to that whole dosage thing, too, where you kind of have to you start small and you work your way up. Because the, the goal is optimize oxygen utilization. That can't happen overnight. It takes time to do that. And that's why I think everyone should have their own machine. Because if you're to start to do ozone at an ozone clinic, I mean, yeah, if you got all the money in the world, don't worry about it. And, and time, don't worry about it. But if you really want to utilize ozone, you need your own machine so that you can do it periodically, consistently, over years to really fix your underlying conditions. Uh, because things can flare up. Um, especially when you start scrubbing deep in the body, you know, these viruses and stuff, they hide fungus will hide. So the virus, some certain viruses will hide like in your, in your myelin sheath, in, in the lower parts of your spine, in parts of your liver. So you might've cleared out everything in your blood. You might not be having reactions, but then you start scrubbing deep, you start getting deep down in your body. All of a sudden that shit flares up 
because you you've kind of been knocking deep, deep in your inner of your door and that's also very uh similar to when you start doing facial work mild facial work in the body especially in the groin area where you start getting real deep into your fascia and your groin and your hip flexors and your psoad area uh i've done a lot of facial work with the power plate and it's, it's flared up all types of like back pain neck pain i mean i when i grew up i had shingles chicken pox so that's sd bar right there mm. right and so i've got that i used to get fever blisters inside my mouth all up on my my lips not all over or anything like that but i had bad virus right and um and yeah, you know, it's something that we all we all kind of have these underlying conditions. There's no one's free from it. No one's perfect. And yeah, um, yeah. yeah. A, cu- a couple of weeks ago on Instagram, I posted uh, my only family vacation to Baja, Mexico, when I was like, I don't know, thirteen, fourteen, something like that, and I got eaten up by sand fleas. And I was delving into ozone research, and I found out about this parasite that I guess it's really common um, that comes from sand flea bites. And I was reading about the symptoms. I'm like, dang, I've experienced every one of these pretty much. Um, and the, the parasite will actually go and like embed in your macrophages and in your mm-hmm. immune cells. And so I, I bet I'm wiping that out too. Cause I was, I had a huge reaction for weeks to those sand fleas when I got eaten up in Baja, Mexico. Mm-hmm. So. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, and, you know, the thing that people need to also understand, too, about ozone is that, you know, it doesn't cure you of anything. The ozone itself doesn't. But by allowing your body to utilize oxygen properly through those ozonides and through all the reactions that happen, your body becomes or envelops into a state of optimal health and well-being. And that is a state of a self-healing self-regulating human body and and once that happens you you don't really have these flare-ups or these issues does that mean it's cured you that ozone cures you absolutely not because ozone works with your natural physiological chemical reactions in the body and optimizes them so to say that ozone does that is a is a false and that was another thing that the guy that I used to work with would always say, oh, yeah, it cured everything, cure cancer, no, 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 no. He just blatantly say that shit to people. And I'm like, you do not understand how ozone works in the body. <laughs> Obviously, you know, because the body is a self-healing, self-regulating machine. But we just got to let go and let let the G-O-D in, you know. And the way I look at that is like the breath of life, right? That's oxygen. Right? You start to go into like that first chapter in Genesis and just talk about God breathed into, you know, from the dust and he breathed us into existence, this breath, this idea of O2. It's very, very powerful molecule. And that's why Morel and, and Ray P talk about it so much. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if I'm butchering this quote by Morley Robbins, but he said, ozone is the third most reactive substance. Uh, fluoride's number one and iron's number two. So it's wow. uh, pretty powerful. <laughs> Extremely. Yeah. Um, do you want to go into some Q and a questions? Do you have time for that? I, I don't, but let's do it. And I'll be, I'll be as fast as I can. Um, they're, they're all waiting on me now, you know? So uh, yeah, I'm a little bit past due here, but let, let's just go. I want to do this. I've been wanting to do this with you for a while and, and get on here. So I appreciate it. Well, we'll just do a few and I'll pick the best ones here. Um, how, did, how does ozone therapy stack with infrared sauna? Um, do they synergize? Absolutely. So again, anything that you're doing, ozone therapy is going to improve because it improves oxygen utilization. So if your oxygen utilization is improved, your ability to detox is improved. So if you're then going into an infrared sauna, which by the way, I love and I do, I did one this morning, you're just going to accelerate the benefits of the infrared sauna. That's awesome. And then uh, how many times do you use per day and week? And I know you're not a doctor and you referred me to, uh, what was the guy's protocol? Uh, Saul Pressman, I think. Yeah, I gave you Saul's Pressman, in which he, <laughs> he doesn't have 
you know, his knowledge on it is best ever either. He, he kind of old school. He hasn't done any of the new stuff that's come from the people in, in South America. But it, it depends on you. So, for example, the, it, it depends on you. It depends on your ability to handle ozone. But it also depends on the therapy you're doing. So if you're just making ozone water every day and you're drinking that, you can, you can have that theoretically every day. Now, if you start drinking that and you start noticing like, oh, wow, I'm like detoxing or getting dizzy, then that's too much. So you have to kind of taper back a little bit, right? Um, if you're doing rectal insufflation, which is a little bit more intense of a therapy, but obviously gives you the same benefits as autohemotherapy, which is the most sought after ozone therapy in the world to do, then, you know, there's a, there's a three week protocol you can do. The most intense or the most you could do is a, is a, Three week, one week off. And the way it works is you do two doses. You do a dose in the morning and a dose at night. You start with about 20 gamma at 200 mLs. And then you work your way up to 40 gamma to 400 mLs. And you, you basically titrate that up every week. You increase a little bit to a little bit more. Um, and you know, I know you and I, Matt, have never even done 40 gamma. I know we're at a higher level. I have to just say, though, you know, like, if you get trained by me, you're signing a waiver. Because if you start thinking you can handle massive amounts of ozone and you're not ready, your body's going to react. But that rectal insufflation protocol, again, is three weeks on, twice a day, one week off. And then you can kind of bring that back in. Now, if you're just wanting to do it for just general maintenance or general well-being, then they say three to four times a week, once a day um, is okay. So, not a doctor. Everyone's different. The key with ozone is start small. Start small. If you're going to buy your own machine, don't be in a rush. Start small, go slow, and slowly increase to handle what you can handle. Because the last thing you're going to do is do too much and feel like shit, right? Like that's the last thing you're going to want. Because then you're not going to want to do ozone again. And that's actually what happened to me in the very beginning. The guy that taught me, we were actually doing direct injection into the vein, which is kind of a no-no. It's the only way that uh, that you can create a gas bubble in your vein, which can actually really harm you. It's not the ozone that harms you, it's the gas bubble. And he would just blast me with it in the beginning. And I had many times where I would just feel sick and not well. And then he'd be like, oh, you need to do the ozone sauna. So I'd do the ozone sauna. And it was like all the steam from the sauna and like pulling all these calories and all that sweating. Because a lot of people think that ozone sauna is where it's at. I totally disagree with the ozone sauna. Um, so anyways, you can use ozone every day. You know, even the ears, but you have to make sure your dosage is right and that you can handle it. I, I, there's really no need to do it every day, though, mm -hmm. you know, but definitely every week. Right. Unless you're three weeks on and then you have that one week that you're off. If you're doing that protocol, you obviously couldn't do it every week then. So awesome. Well, yeah, that, that was kind of a good segue. Someone has it's kind of an aggressive one. Why is direct IV ozone the absolute best way, hands down, according to medical proof? Um, it seems dangerous like you said the gas embolism i forget which book yeah. i'm reading but well, they have to hold the so syringe a certain way yeah they're they're saying why is it the most effective is yeah. that what they're saying mm -hmm. yeah so well it's the same with autohemotherapy right except the autohemotherapy they're pulling the blood out ozonating it putting it up in back in because you're getting ozone or ozonized in the blood that's why it's so powerful mm -hmm. you're getting it straight to the bloodstream and it can go and in, go into the whole lymphatic system and all the major organs to the limb, right? But, but rectal does you, the same, right? Last, do what? <laughs> but rectal does the same thing, right? <laughs> rectal does the same thing, exactly. There's no need to poke yourself with a needle. There's no need to do auto hemotherapy if you have your own machine. You don't need to do all that. You do a five-minute rectal insufflation, four inches in your rectum, or no, I was going to say something stupid after that. Say like something funny, what I told you earlier about sticking the hose all the way in. But uh, we'll, we'll leave that. But yeah, so that's why. But again, it's very invasive to poke yourself with a needle. I mean, you're going to cash your veins out. How many times can you poke yourself in the same spot? You're going to look like a freaking a heroin addict, right? All needle poked and stuff. Like, But that's why. Because the ozone goes directly into the bloodstream. But again... Rectal insufflation. And also to note, 
If you do it in your ears, you're flooding the brain and the sinuses. Hmm. So you're not getting it directly into the bloodstream per se, but you're going to flood your brain with O's and I's. Amazing. I got to right? try that. <laughs> your sinus cavities, people always get coughs, colds, things like this. I mean, this is the therapy I do with my kids. The kids don't do insufflation, okay? Like they're, ch- they're children. I'm not going to traumatize them. Like, you have to do it. <laughs> but they do the ears. They do the ears. They love it. They just put the, the tube in their ear, one ear, and then they put the tube in the other ear. I mean, there's, you know, all these different accessories you can buy on the market. A lot of people don't agree with some of these accessories. They say that they're one time to five time use on all of them. And the people that sell them say, no, you can keep using them over and over again. So again, when you've got certain plastic fittings that are going through the silicone hoses, you just have to be careful. You know, they call it ozone resistant. It's all made out of ozone resistant, you know, tubes. But I'm like, okay, well, what about the plastic fittings that connect the tubes together? Are those ozone resistant? And the answer to that question is no, it's plastic. Over time, it's going to break down. So. It makes sense. Um, can ozone help the teeth and cavities? Absolutely, because it helps with oxygen utilization. Mm-hmm. So in that case, you would make an ozone water. You would swish that in your mouth. Right. But we have to understand that the root cause to a cavity is typically a mineral deficiency or an overload of another mineral. So even though ozone can help at the root cause, you're going to still need to, to have other things with it to deal with your specific issues. You can't just do ozone and it cure. It's, again, it doesn't just cure you. You have to use it as the backbone, not the only bone to your protocol. So I had cavities, I'd be going on my life, I'd be adding that vitamin K2 to my chart, cart, right? I would be adding more vitamin A into my body, and I would be doing ozone, right? And then I would maybe look at, you know, make sure I'm cleaning my mouth properly, da 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 That would be the protocol that I would use for that, but it's not just going to be ozone that does it. That's awesome. Does, does ozone kill good bacteria? <laughs> no, it doesn't. And this is something that is, again, that's been put out there. If you think ozone damages uh, good bacteria, okay, then it would be like doing hydrogen peroxide therapy or that can oxidize you. So since ozone cannot oxidize you, it's not going to burn up the good. It's just, it's not going to, it's not, it's not going to happen. So from all the research and evidence that I've seen, it does not harm the good. And a lot of people say, oh, well, we need some anaerobic bacteria. Um, I think even you had mentioned some doctor told you that, you know, be careful with rectal insufflation. It can wipe out the anaerobic bacteria in your colon. Mm-hmm. But when you're doing rectal insufflation, it's going right into your bloodstream. It's not traveling up and down your colon. Right. And with that being said, we need a balance of good and bad bacteria. Let's just digress right quick before I even, you know, I shouldn't have said this first. We need a balance of the bad with the good. Mm-hmm. We can't just have nothing but good in us. I mean, spiritually, physically, emotionally, we have to play this roller coaster sublime journey of life, you know? And we need a little bad. So, That's a good point. Even re- ROS, right? Reactive oxygen species, they're kind of us, uh, like they're signaling molecules, right? Like we, just right. like what, when we exercise, we get those. And that's why you don't want to like take aspirin, you know, you want that inflammatory response, just not chronically, right? <laughs> so. Right. I mean, how do your muscles get bigger? You got to break them down first, right? Yep. Um, can you bubble ozone in your bathtub? Someone asked. You can, but it's not going to be very effective. See, ozone does not want to hold in water unless it's extremely cold. And so if you let the water super cold, it's not going to hold in the water. So it's kind of like you're wasting your time. And the amount of ozone that you would need to pump into your bathtub to, even if it was cold, you would need, like I said, you would need like a super industrial machine. Like one is producing, you know, 180 to 200 gamma and it has a huge flow rate. Uh, because it's just a lot to ozone, to ozone. It's a lot to ozone. Mm. 
What about ozone capsules? Someone asked, do they have the same benefits? I know I sent you the sunflower poofo one the other day. Yeah, if, <laughs> if you've got completely saturated ozone, ozone oil, which are long chain ozonides and completely change the viscosity of the oil. So the sunflower stuff doesn't, that doesn't happen. The hemp, the Yehova, that's all ozonide, all that crap on the market besides the olive oil that's done right. Olive oil is the only substance that will change viscosity when ozonated correctly. And yes, you can put that into a capsule. You can also put that in a suppository um, and you can take that. But, and, and just a note, Tesla was the one who coined ozonated olive oil. He had a, his own machine and, uh, and his own, like not machine, his own setup on how he made it. He used magnets. And this is kind of how I was taught to make ozonated olive oil from the head guy. It's like, you know, in order to make it, you've got to completely saturate the olive oil or it will go rancid um, because you're obviously putting ozone in it. But ozone does not create free radicals. OK, so it's not going to necessarily make the oil go rancid. The oil will go rancid on its own, just exposure to the elements. Um so awesome. yes, you can. You just make sure you use the right stuff. And I know we're sold out of ours right now. We're going to be having more. And it'll be the good stuff. You know, it'll be completely saturated. It just it takes time to make the good stuff. You know, I see a lot of people say, "Oh, turn on your ozone machine for a few hours, turn it, and then turn it off, and then turn it back on." And you know, when you're make, trying to make the oil, and then eventually it'll turn white. Bullshit. Oh well, <laughs> tried it. It doesn't work. You've got to have it set up right to make the ozone olive oil correctly. And if you want to make it the way Tesla made it, then you're going to have to do it a little bit different than what's kind of out there on the internet. And no one really wants to show you how to make it. Who's making it right because I mean, it's their product on the market. But I, I don't mind showing people how to do it. it it's it, it's kind of cost prohibitive to do it, though, because you have to get an oxygen concentrator and you have to get an oxygen, a different type of oxygen regulator that goes into the ozone machine. But the cool thing is, is our machines, you don't have to turn on like they have a lifetime transferable warranty. Our machines, you don't have to worry about them burning up or anything like that. And that's another reason why a lot of these people say, oh, turn it off after four hours. Yeah, because you're going to burn the machine up because it's got this shitty technology inside of it. But to make it right, you have to leave the machine on for like 30 days. And um, unless you have a machine that can handle that, then you can't obviously make it. And our machines can do that. They can make that. We make our ozonated olive oil from our machines so that's awesome are you gonna have a training video for people on how to make that on your site i so right now i just got through finished shooting the rectal insufflation the ear the water the what tank to buy and um how to set it up but i'm gonna do some advanced trainings later on on you know it's yeah i will i just haven't got mm -hmm. it done to today it's not up now Right. And all those videos, and rectal and all that stuff, I need to send to you, Matt. I just got them up, but they're unlisted on YouTube. The only ones that are listed on YouTube publicly are going to be like what tank to buy and how to set up your machine, because that's going to go to the people that just purchased the machine on our site. If you purchase training too, then you're going to start to receive those other videos on how to do the specific therapies. Cause there's a ton of therapies you can uh, utilize with ozone, but the top three, and the ones that, you know, most people will always do, that should do, in my opinion, is my opinion, is the rectal, the water, and the ears. And then obviously, if you've got like a, if you got psoriasis on your skin, a cupping. But at the same token, it's like, use the olive, ozonated olive oil mm. at that point. Uh, so It's easier. Yeah. And if people are yeah. overwhelmed, all they need pretty much is your machine and then find like a welding supply store and get pure oxygen tank right no two tank and that's it yes sir yeah mm -hmm. and, and that's an industrial tank that's the tanks that i've used from the beginning you know to get a medical grade tank you got to get a prescription for it it costs more it, it, you know so if you buy an accessory kit from us you're not going to get a, a medical regulator you're going to get an industrial regulator it's 100 percent brass in the inside those regulators are really expensive that i get it's not the shit on amazon it's 30 40 bucks it you know doesn't have brass in the inside i found out that's pretty damn important. Um, but yeah, yeah you, you just need, and you can also, I actually found this out the other day, you can actually get the oxygen tanks at Home Depot now. 
Oh, wow. You don't even, really? yeah, I, I didn't know that. Someone told me like, oh, I went to Home Depot. And I was like, really? They're like, yeah, check it out. And I looked it up. I was like, no oh, shit, look at that. Do they do refills? Home Depot now. Do they do refills too or? Yeah, they do. They, well, here's how a refill works. <laughs> is when you first buy your oxygen tank, yeah, they're going to charge you two, 250 bucks, but that's because you're buying the tank. But then when you go to exchange it, you give them the empty tank. They just give you a new tank, but they only charge you 20 bucks for the hmm. refill. Hmm. So that's how it works. It's just like a, kind of like the raw milk thing, right? Where you're a raw milk and glass. You just bring your glass containers back, but initially you put a deposit down for the, those glass containers. It's the same thing with oxygen. You're basically putting a deposit down that if you don't bring that tank back, you know, they don't lose, right? Um, and But then when you go to fill it back up, it's like 20 bucks to fill up. That's awesome. Well, yeah, there's like hundreds of liters, right, per tank. I'm still surprised. I mean, I have the midsize one. I forget the the name of it. It's probably 20 it, cubic foot is probably I, what you have, I'm I, thinking. I think so. Yeah, it's like to your waist yeah. or something. And uh, yeah, that thing's lasted me. I think I filled it up like a month ago. It's crazy how long it lasts. <laughs> so, yeah, so I have a 20 cubic foot tank. It's the one I always suggest people get. Unless you really want to travel with it, you get a smaller one. But we've had ours for like six months. I have people come over all the time. I'm doing ozone regularly. And my tank is still right on, it's right under half, halfway full. So yeah, the one, one thing I'll warn people of is if you're going to do the ozonated water, maybe set a timer because I think twice I left it on overnight and that drained the, drained the tank completely. Cause I forgot to yeah. turn it off. <laughs> yeah. You got to turn it off or you'll, you'll, drain your oxygen but the good thing is it's cheap to refill right mm -hmm. yep awesome well uh i know you got to run so really appreciate you being generous generous with your time and did you make a little discount code for the listeners or yes yes we, we didn't even talk about that so we're mm -hmm. gonna do a, a discount code uh for you guys and let's get off here and we'll figure that out mm -hmm. and then would you be able to like re-edit this and put come back in hey the discount code is this yeah yeah i, I record okay, separately cool. yep so i'll do that <laughs> okay cool let's do that we were kind of rushed today right with things and got moved around a little bit and i i know we didn't get to talk about that but yes there's going to be a, a specific offer i know a lot of you guys that have bought purchased our products through matt have tried to use that discount code that, but that that initial discount code through the affiliate link thing is a 10 percent off it's a one-time use code it's not a continual use code so we had some people saying oh the the discount's not working and it's like well have you purchased crucial four products through his link before and they're like yes i'm like well that's why so we need to make a we wanted to make a special code specifically for people that maybe have already used that one-time use code and uh, we just need to figure out the dollar amount. I'm sure we're going to be able to at least knock off a hundred bucks off that, you know, whatever they choose, whether they just do the machine or the machine with the accessories. Uh, but, and then we'll make a discount code. We'll call it whatever we call it. Um, well, I, th but I again, think it's, you, it, it's yeah. super worth it. I spent thousands on devices and I mean, less than two grand for something that's going to last a lifetime is crazy for the, for the benefits you get from your machine. It's so. clean. It's pure. It's, you know, we didn't even talk about stabilized ozone output in our technology. That's extremely important. The, the lifetime warranty is transferable. So say you give a machine to someone or say you decide whatever that, that warranty transfers over. Um, so yeah, I, I felt like for us to like, when we were trying to make all this work and happen, we wanted to make something again, that was clean, pure and consistent. And also had a lifetime warranty, allowed you to be able to make strong ozone, also weak ozone, so you could have the whole the whole versatility at all. So if you wanted to make your own ozonated olive oil, you could do that. And if you wanted to make extremely strong water, you could do that. But also if you wanted to try to trade that down, say you got to go to your friend's house who eats Wendy's still or some bullshit <laughs> fast food, you could turn it down for him, you know, and start to kind of. <laughs> if you're dosing someone with iron overload, right? <laughs> exactly. Someone with iron overload, for sure. <laughs> I love it. Well, yeah, I'm, I'm really glad we got to make this happen, even though right now, currently, I don't have internet and we're doing this on speaker on the iPhone. Um, message has to get out there and really appreciate your passion, your transparency, your integrity, and just what you're all about. So, yeah, really grateful to know you. And we'll have to do this again. I'm sure, uh, well, I'm sure we'll have more questions that sprout up. Oh, I'm sure. And 
Likewise to you, brother. Really appreciate you, and um, I've really enjoyed our connection over the last few years. And yeah, thank you. Love it. Yeah, and I'm still taking your, I think, M Power Pine Pollen, the American Ginseng, and the Cordyceps. I've been those. That's been my trio to keep me uh, nice. energized. <laughs> so, nice, nice. Love it. All right, Charles. Well, um, thanks so much, and uh, stick around as I close out the show. All right. Well, that was a really fun chat. I always learn something about ozone when I speak with Charles about it. And it's really interesting the nuances that go into ozone machines. On social media over the last few years, I've seen so many people buy cheap ones and they're making ozonated water to drink from these machines that are made in China. And that can't be good. You're gonna have impurities like Charles talked about the aluminum in the ceramic, and we're trying to detoxify, not add more pollution to the body. I like what Charles said about the NAD to NADH ratio and how that's almost synonymous or an indicator of your oxygen utilization. This subject is simple in some ways, but so nuanced and complex in other ways. And that's why I've been just obsessed with ozone over the last several months, buying every book I can on it. Uh, as he mentioned, Ed McCabe's flood your body with oxygen. Cause that's more with oxidative therapies in general. He talks about hyperbaric oxygen therapy and other things. And it's funny how each book kind of has their different beliefs and perspectives and I like that Charles broke down some of those myths in this show. Uh, I've also been skimming through Heal Yourself with Ozone by Paula Haran, and also The Ozone Miracle by Frank Schauenberger. That's a really easy, short read, um, less than 100 pages. So that's a good crash course to ozone therapy. But I'm going to definitely check out the other one by Frank Schauenberger that Charles recommended but like he said, this information is suppressed and it's so powerful and it's so cheap. I mean, short of the initial investment of purchasing your own machine, you're just paying for oxygen refills after that. And like Charles said, like 20 bucks or something. And each tank has hundreds of liters. And so it lasts forever. And it's one of the more affordable therapies and it's so broad acting. Like he was saying, it increases oxygen utilization, which I just learned over the last few months. I used to think that it just straight oxidized you when you have PUFAs and lipofuscin and iron overload, but it's actually not the case. From my research, it can actually help with all of those things. It can actually help with everything. As Charles said, when you increase oxygen utilization, there's like no part of human physiology that that doesn't affect and improve. I really like the versatility of it too. Like if you don't want to do rectal insufflation, then you could just do ear insufflation and drink the ozonated water and still get a ton of benefit. I don't think it's as much of a benefit as the direct insufflation, as he was talking about that being pretty identical to IV autohemotherapy, but you could still benefit nonetheless. And I think that this is one tool that everybody should have, not only in these times, the last couple of years with the current events that are happening, but just in general. Like I said, growing up with black mold, I grew up in a house for about 20 years, pretty close to the beach. And a lot of beach homes have tons of mold inside of the walls. You can't see it, but you're inhaling it and ingesting it for years or decades. And that doesn't just go out of you because the mold will actually shut off your detoxification pathways and you can't get rid of it. And that's how a lot of pathogens operate, including parasites that kind of hijack your immune system and prevent it from kicking them out because they want to they found a good home and they want to stay there. But 
what's cool about ozone is that nothing is immune to it. And unlike antibiotics and things like that, it, the pathogens can't become immune to ozone. They can't mount a defense over time to ozone and become resistant to it like they can antibiotics like we hear about. So it's very, very powerful. And from my research, very safe. As always with all of these shows, I'm just sharing my experience and anecdotes and none of this is medical advice or to be misconstrued as such. But I just look around at all of the people caught in fear, even the ones that just glance at the news, let alone have it on 24 seven and just the mind control, brainwashing, glossy eyed fog that people are walking around in fear. And we just don't know how many tools we have available to us. People can't imagine that you could buy something for a couple grand or less, have it for your entire life and be able to address multiple issues at once. Not only the pathogen side of the fence, but perhaps more importantly, the oxygen utilization, actually utilizing the oxygen. Now I was at the store the other day and I saw the, I think it was called Oxy Boost or something, the oxygen inhalers for athletes, pure oxygen in a can. <laughs> it's kind of genius marketing, right? They're probably making a killing, but that's not what it's about. And that's one of the myths about oxygen therapy is that it's just about flooding the body with oxygen. But more importantly, it's using that oxygen. It's not just about getting more oxygen into the system, Although that can help, for example, with hyperbaric oxygen therapy, you're with pressure pushing oxygen four times further into the system. That can be a benefit. And by breathing more than 21% oxygen, say 60% or 80% oxygen, that could be a huge benefit, but it works better. And how I use hyperbaric oxygen therapy in conjunction with bioavailable copper, with Sheila G, with whole food vitamin C, with beef liver, with these sources of copper, that's the only mineral that is the chef that chops up oxygen so that we can use it. And I think it's that combo that is often missing because a lot of these ozone therapy, integrative medicine, natural health practitioners, they're recommending high dose zinc or high dose ascorbic acid or all of these things that deplete copper, which is a scaringly high amount of quote unquote nutritional supplements that are being pawned off to the ignorant public that don't understand the mineral balance seesaw that occurs in the body. As I often say on this podcast, there's often not only two things that are connected on a seesaw, but multiple, you could say axes. Vitamin D3 or cholecalciferol is one of those things. It's not just a K2 thing, like you see D3 slash K2 supplement. That is kindergarten level understanding of D3. There's so many connections with it. Retinol, magnesium, potassium, copper, it just goes on and on. It's not just D3 and K2. You're depleting so many things when you supplement vitamin D. So we'll probably have to do another episode on ozone therapy in the future. I feel like we just scratched the surface a little bit. And all of the podcasts that I've been downing, like Dave Asprey's one, I think he has had four or five shows on ozone. They were okay. I think there's only one that I enjoyed, but there's not a lot of good info. Uh, really appreciate how passionate Charles is and how he just jam packed so much info in this episode. I haven't heard any podcast episode or radio show on ozone that comes close to the accurate information that Charles shared here. I already ordered that book by Schallenberger, the principles and applications for ozone therapy. He recommends that one more than the ozone miracle. And I'm excited to dive in there. And I also thought it was fascinating that you can get oxygen tanks at Home Depot. Definitely going to check that out. I just recently moved, as he 
alluded to in the show to Colorado and going from 2,000 feet elevation to a little over 8,000 feet has been a real shock for my system. And combining that with the Nest system in this house and the Wi-Fi refrigerator, I've been getting slammed and honestly a little bit fatigued and stressed. But I could say that ozone has been helping. I've been doing first thing in the morning, rectal insufflation. Like I said, five, maybe 10 minutes max, usually less. I'll usually fill the bag while I'm doing other stuff because that's actually what takes the most time is filling up the bag with ozone. And I don't necessarily recommend it, but I use the whole bag, 750 mLs. I started with 400. And again, emphasis, this is not what I'm recommending for people to do. It's just what I'm doing. I'm in a relatively good state of health. And so I can handle um, that. And I'll do one eighth flow rate um, and 750 mL. But that's kind of a hardcore uh, dose. So it's not recommended for uh, starting out. But before I move on to other rants, um, really appreciate Charles and what he shares and provides with his company, Crucial Four. I'm going to put a link below where you can go and check out his cold quartz ozone machine. And if you use the discount code ozone mat, you actually save $150 on a unit, which is a pretty good amount, especially for what you're getting. I've seen cheaper machines selling for pretty much double this. And so for something that's going to last forever, it's well worth it. And like he mentioned, he actually offers training. So if you spend a few hundred dollars more, you get a setup call training and accessories instead of um, just the machine, which I highly recommend if you feel overwhelmed uh, and you're just getting into it. And my website is matt-blackburn.com. I have the CLF protocol up there, all of my recommended products. Since I've been moving the last few weeks, I've been a little behind with updating things and with creating content, but I will get back into that next week and I'll get more consistent with sharing info. But if you want to stay up to date, I have the Mito Life Academy and that's a private YouTube school where you can sign up for either 10, 15 or $25 a month and you get access to either basic, intermediate or advanced videos that aren't available to the general public and also a live Q&A that's available to all basic members and above uh, once a month, which lately has been near the end of the month. So a lot of people get on me about their never have their questions answered or whatever, and just understand I'm a human being. I have a life, I have relationships. I need sunlight and grounding and family time and friends time and romantic time, just like everyone else. And so the Mito Life Academy is a place where you can have access to me and ask questions, especially during that live Q and A. If you're reading my material and you have a list of questions building up, just literally write them down and then watch for my live Q and A once a month and hop on there and ask them and I'll answer every single one of them. I um, wanted to give a shout out to hypoallergenic air. Since I'm back on the grid temporarily for the next few years, I've been enjoying plugging things in again, uh, especially air filters. And with dust, which is largely dead skin cells, um, a lot of people have allergic reactions to that. Um, I definitely do. And so having a really good air purifier is awesome. And what I like about this company is they don't have a huge marketing team. A lot of it's word of mouth. They just go to health conferences and there's not a huge markup for that reason. And so I've been a huge proponent of this company for years. Uh, my first podcast episode on My Life Radio was actually with David Milburn of Hypogenic Air. And right now they're having a Black Friday sale on their Germ Defender, the Air Angel, and the Boomerang. And I actually just ordered all three um, for my new home here in Colorado. And their best 
product is probably their whole home solution, which I plan to set up, which is nice because you don't need all these separate filters everywhere taking up outlets and space. You just plumb this in directly into your ventilation, either your air conditioning, your heating. And David actually informed me that you don't need to run your heat or AC. You just need to run the fan. So you could hook it up where if you don't, like I personally don't like using central heat or central air or anything like that. You could just do kind of like a circulation thing where there's no AC, there's no heat, and it's just circulating these ions that are removing mold, viruses, bacteria, allergens, gases, and it actually cleans surfaces. That's what's really cool about this company's air filters is um, a lot of their units suck in air, but some of them, like the Air Angel, just shoot out particles. And these ions attach to allergens in the air, and they'll actually clean door handles, uh, desks, countertops, and sanitize them. And it's not about being a germaphobe. It's just about realizing in indoor environments, things get pretty gross because it's a stagnant environment. If there's not a lot of windows, there might not be a lot of UV light. And even if there is, maybe that UV light isn't enough to clean. And again, not about being a germaphobe, just about taking the burden off of your immune system, breathing in dead skin cells all day, every day, especially while you sleep. So my discount code BLACKBURN actually stacks with their Black Friday sale. And I use that myself. And I think that's a really good deal on really high quality air filtration products. A little announcement with Panacea with the company MitoLife. You can find it at mitolife.co. Uh, we've been getting that back in stock daily now. So every day now you should see that coming back. And it's still selling out pretty quickly. But as of this recording, it's in stock. So just keep your eye out on the MitoLife website. Um, and on the Panacea product page, I have clinical studies listed there and a video of what makes MitoLife Panacea unique from other Shilajit products, even other Shilajit tablet products. It's a lot cleaner. It's third-party lab tested and it works. It's my favorite nootropic and to me, the cornerstone of my health protocol to make sure I'm getting that fulvic acid in a whole food source, which is the key, not isolated fulvic acid, which I think is harmful. And all of the trace minerals and the D-alpha benzopyrones and all of the other components of Shilajit that people often don't talk about. An exciting announcement, we just released grounding technology. So grounding bed sheets. We have twin, full, queen, king, and an optional grounding rod, which is not included, but that's extra. Otherwise, it just comes with a regular cord that you plug into the third prong on your outlet. But ideally, you go rod to earth, and there's less chance of getting stray voltage that way, and you get more of a benefit if you go direct with the grounding rod. I've been grounding since 2010. It was actually one of the first things that I implemented once I started learning about natural health and I kind of started going deeper and peeling back deeper layers of the onion instead of just basic, you know, GMOs and glyphosate and all of that stuff. Starting to get into magnetism and water and light, but way beyond what you hear about in the general health community. You know, for example, sunlight is just for vitamin D. That's like 1% or less of sunlight's benefit. It's more a retinol story with vitamin A. But I remember when I was living in Point Loma, San Diego in my childhood home, and I had my dad crawl under the house into the crawl space, and we threw the carpet, put the disconnected the grounding rod, shoved the cord through a little hole, in the ground in my bedroom and he went down there with a hammer and pounded it into the dirt and I started sleeping like that and besides doing a little experiment with the Magnetico sleep pad which I used for about three years straight which I think was overkill it's my understanding now that this is a better long-term solution 
for sleep. And the Magnetico with static, very strong, obviously unnatural magnetism is more of a therapeutic thing for heavy metal detoxification and a temporary thing, like should not be used indefinitely forever. But I think the grounding sheets, you're just literally being barefoot, essentially. You're connecting conductively to the Earth's negatively charged electrons. Um, it's, it doesn't get more natural than that. And I don't think we realize the effects of being disconnected from the Earth 24-7 for our entire life. Uh, that's a huge stress to the body. Um, when I first started selling products, when I was making magnesium bicarbonate and bottling it myself in my RV in Chula Vista and working in a cannabis dispensary, I've had a really interesting journey. I would drive on my days off or when I got off work early, I would drive to the beach and go barefoot on the wet sand and sun gaze at sunset and with all of the stress of working insane hours of driving insane hours every day of doing so much staying up late with my friends i still felt incredible and i attribute a lot of that not just to nutrition but to doing that practice even two or three days a week because i was discharging a lot there was actually a power line about 10 feet above my bed in that RV that I slept in for a year. And so in that situation, and I've actually talked with my friend Brian Hoyer about this of Shielded Healing, he said in that situation, that's where Magnetico really makes sense. And that's where he recommends it to his EMF clients is if you are right next to a power line, then having a really strong magnetic field to counter that makes sense. I think with the grounding sheets, the ideal way to do it is obviously outside of the city. Like one of the best times to use these grounding sheets is while you're camping and to bring the grounding rod with you or get an extra one and put that outside your tent. That is the optimal time to use it. It's, it's the best if there's no cell reception and you use the grounding rod and the grounding bed sheet while you're sleeping. That is optimal. And then as we move away from that, it gets very nuanced, very complicated, even with, you know, secondary signals being created from the silver fibers and it gets really complicated, but you can go by how you feel. You know, if you have a sleep tracker like the Aura Ring, you could see how it's affecting your sleep. And I'm just a big fan of experimentation. And I think it can't hurt to try something you know, it's obviously not going to kill you to sleep on a silver grid, which is what the grounding sheet is. It's 100% cotton with silver threads as a grid on there. And that's what actually conducts the negatively charged electrons up to your body. And those go throughout your body, neutralizing free radicals that are positively charged, call those protons. And so there's Clinical studies showing the effects of grounding the human body on mood, on inflammation, wound healing, the immune response, even prevention of chronic inflammatory and immune diseases, um, reducing muscle damage after exercise, um, even improving vagal tone. I'm reading studies that I have listed on the product page here. Um, reducing blood visco viscosity a major factor in cardiovascular disease, improving facial blood flow, which is huge for skin conditions um, and for even lowering cortisol levels. Or I think, you know, cortisol is not bad, just like estrogen is not bad or nitric oxide is not bad, but in excess, they're bad. And so what grounding does is actually regulates your cortisol rhythm and your circadian rhythm because Cortisol is good. That's why coffee is good, is because it you know increases cortisol, and we need cortisol in the morning and early in the day. But at night, that should lower, and melatonin should go up. And grounding technology can really help with that. So that's it for today's show. Uh, later in the month, I think I'm going to do a little solo show, but I have some fun ones coming up. 
uh, with my friend Tane Webster. We're going to do a show on ADHD. And then week after that, I'm going to have Mr. Morley Robbins back on the show to talk about his new book called Cure Your Fatigue that I've been really loving. And just want to say a thank you to all of you that are listening. Uh, we're approaching 1 million downloads here just on iTunes alone, not counting YouTube, Stitcher, and everywhere else that this show is posted. And also, if you can't find a show, I don't know if shows are being removed, you can often find them on my YouTube channel. So be sure to subscribe. It's Matt Blackburn. If you just search on YouTube, subscribe to my channel. And that way you can look back at, you'd say, archived My Life Radio episodes and listen to those because there's a lot of good ones over the last few years. So thank you guys. See you next Friday and stay supercharged. <laughs>